What's up everyone, it's Bones here. In today's video, I'll be showcasing some of the new Chaos cards that we got last night, but more importantly, I wanted to showcase the Mind Tuner, which I believe was the better card that we got out from that pile. But before I begin, if you happen to enjoy content like this, clicking on those thumbs up and subscribe buttons would be greatly appreciated as they go a long way in supporting the channel and show me that you like content like this. So to begin, we're going to activate the copy of Emergency Teleport because Mind Tuner is a level 3 psychic monster and now we can use its effect which reads you can only activate one of the following effects of Mind Tuner once per turn and only once that turn banish one light and or one dark monster from your hand and or graveyard, increase or decrease this card's level by the number banished until the end of this turn. So as you can see, this is just an additional way to get your Thunder Dragons out of hand, but it also has a cute little effect here that says target up to two of your banished monsters one light and one dark, return those monsters to the graveyard, and if you do increase or decrease this card's level by the number returned until the end of this turn. So I call it a cute effect here because of the synergy of snow and thunder dragons that we already know that they have, but being able to return the thunder dragons off of Mind Tuner is just a cute little boost in my opinion, especially when you have the Ashizu cards to just turbo your cards into the graveyard. But to continue the replay, we'll use the Mind Tuner to banish the Roar's cost, then the Roar can activate its effect, which will bring us the Dragon Dark, and you're going to decrease its level in order to go into the Shooting Riser. And I'm playing this the way I am because we have the Keldo and the Kelbeck, because you theoretically could go into Hauk there and just do different things. But for the sake of this video and kind of being able to show everything I want to show, I'm going to put it all into this one replay and make the Shooting Riser play in order to guarantee that you can get a snow into the graveyard as you see there as I activate the chaos space pitching the dragon hawk adding the collapse serpent and I also have the Ashizu cards to mill a bunch but you'll see that I'm going to banish the mind tuner for the collapse serpent collapse serpent can then use its effect after I link it away into striker dragon adding the wyver buster and now I can link away here into Hauk, which Hauk will then special summon diviner out from deck then I can special summon the Wyver Buster. Then I'm going to use the Chaos Base, put back the Collapse Serpent into my deck, draw one. And from here I can link away into Sprite Elf, which then Sprite Elf can revive the Diviner. And now I can link away into IP Masquerina and then use the Wyver to add back the Collapse Serpent. And this is basically what your mind tuner will get you. And now I'm going to use the Keldo effect pitching the Kelbeck and from there I can add the Aguila which will then allow me to trigger the Kelbeck which will mill five and I do just that which hits an Aguila and now I can use the Aguila in graveyard and the one in hand. The one in hand will special summon itself reviving a level four Earth Fairy from my graveyard, and the, and the second Aguila will mill another fire. As you see, I've milled two of the Chaos cards here, and I warn, I've taken them out completely from the deck list, and I'll tell you for what. And the reason is the fact that they hard lock you into light and dark synchro monsters, and the way that their levels are just really weird as the level sixes and stuff for lights and darks aren't necessarily powerhouses and you kind of have to build up between them to get into a level eight or higher so it's like really weird but to read these cards you'll see that this card cannot be normal summon set must be special summoned by a card effect you can banish one light monster from your hand and or graveyard. Special summon this card from the hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except light and dark synchro monsters. And if this card is special summoned, you can target one of your core of chaos and special summon it. But another downside that it has is that if it leaves the field, it also gets banished and it has that same effect as Core of Chaos, which as you can see does the same right here. If this face of card leaves the field, banish it. But Core of Chaos reads cannot be normal summon set, must be special summoned with a card effect. You can banish one dark monster from your hand and or graveyard. 
Special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except light and dark synchro monsters. If this card is special summoned, you can target one of your banished Cell of Chaos, special summon it. So, this kind of reminds me of some of the old Chaos cards that we got way back when, Sphere of Chaos, and I think it was Chaos Knight or something like that. It was the level 3 that we got way back when. And while these cards do have potential to be good in the future, I just don't think that our current card pool supports them quite well enough just yet. So to continue the replay here, you'll see that we're going to rank up into our Abyss Dweller, and this will practically end up being our board. Mind you, if I had actually removed the Core of Chaos and the Shell of Chaos for things like Gizmek and Shinobi Necro, Distrudo and so forth, I could have an extra extender here to go into the Hit Knight for another interruption. So now I'm going to go over the deck profile and if you're wondering, the Shell of Chaos and the Core were ran in the build that you just saw at 2 and 2, but it just wasn't worth it. If there's a specific engine that you could possibly replace with this here, it's actually the Bisted cards. You can probably play three Magnemut, one Druid Worm, or you can do something like this, where you basically have your small Bisted engine with one Orochi and one Shinobi Necro. But the reason that you saw the three Gizmek and the one Shinobi Necro was because of the Ishizu cards trying to mill as much as possible and you wanting the extra extender in scenarios like the replay you just saw to have the extra body to get on board. Now, if you're wondering what the other Chaos cards were, we got Chaos Mirage Dragon, which reads you can target one Banished Light or Dark Monster, Special Summon it to your field, but its effects are negated. Also, you cannot Special Summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except Light and Dark Monsters, or Light and Dark Synchro Monsters, and if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of other materials used for the synchro summon, and then banish them. And it's so uh, you can only use each effect of Mirage Dragon once per turn here. So the reason I don't play this card is because you would have to put your normal summon on it. There's not any good way to revive this from the graveyard, so I just don't think it's worth it right now. And the second one here is Chaos Witch, which reads, you can tribute this card, special summon two Black Beast tokens, Dark Fiend level 2 attack, 1000 attack, 500 defense. To your field, if this card is banished from your hand and or graveyard, you can special summon two White Beast tokens, Light Fairy Tuner, level 2 attack, 500 defense, 1000 to your field, and you can only use one Chaos Witch effect per turn. But you can also not summon monsters from the extra deck, the turn that you use either of these effects. So that's important to remember and the reason why we're not playing it. This could potentially be a really good card down the line, but based off what we have now, it's just not worth playing in my opinion. And then we have the two Synchro Monsters which we got, and as you can see, I actually do play one of them. Even though the only real way that you're making this is through Diviner and Collapse Serpent, but seeing how searchable they were is kind of why I wanted to put this in here. And it, it reads that you need one Light Tuner and one Non-Tuner Dark Monsters. Gained 1000 attack during the turn a card is banished. You can target one of your banished Light or Dark Monsters added to your hand. If this card is in the graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can banish one light and one dark monster from your graveyard and or hand, except this card, special summon this card. So it has a Shen Shen like effect in that regard, or a chaos ruler, except that you're able to do it every turn like Shen Shen. But overall, I thought it was an interesting option to include to the deck list, even if it doesn't stick around. Then we'll see the level 8 here, which is Chaos Archfiend, and it reads that you need one light tuner, one non-dark tuner, and it gains 2,000 attack during the turn a card is banished. This card can attack all of your opponent's monsters once each. Also, monsters destroyed by battle with this card are banished instead of being sent to the graveyard. And if this card in its owner's control leaves the field by your opponent, you can special summon one Chaos Synchro monster from your extra deck, and you can only use this effect of Chaos Archfiend once per turn. So again, a card I could see potentially be 
good down the line if we actually got support that made this easier to make with the actual chaos cards but as of right now i don't even think it's worth playing at all because generic options like chaos ruler or savage are just better so now that we've gotten through all the new cards I'm going to read over the card by card and explain some of my choices. So you'll see that we have the three mind tuner, the one chaos Valkyria, the one wyver buster, the one collapse serpent, the one gives Orochi, the shinobi necro, magnemite, druid worm, the three agido, the three keldo, the three kelbeck, the one mudora, three dragon dark, the two dragon hawk, the two dragon roar, one diviner, one snow, one destrudo, three orange light, three Itali, three chaos space, and one foolish to round out the main deck. So if there's only one thing I want to cover here in the main deck, it's the thunder dragon monsters and their ratios, basically the ability to put them back into graveyard through mind tuner, and the ease it is to just put them into the graveyard through the Ishizu cards, or just outright banish them through Mind Tuner, Itali, once you use the Itali to summon the Mind Tuner, makes the Thunder Dragons less of fusion cards for this deck, as they are synchro and link material in this deck, as you saw, you're able to go into things like Shooting Riser, or the Chaos Roller, and depending on your play, you Baron through it as if you use the mind tuner to banish a dragon dark and a roar special summon a dragon hawk then you have your level 10 while the second way you do it really is through the diviner of the herald and hawk if you have chaos ruler access you'll see that there's also no allure of darkness in this build and i wanted to keep it at 40 which is why but it's also because there's only two roar, I understand that there's three dark. But that's just five cards in a 40 card deck, in which a lot of the darks you would have to keep in hand, and uh, Mind Tuner can do your banishing. Then onto the extra deck here, we have the One Abyss Dweller, Fever Max, which can be something else, the Unicorn, the Sprite Elf, the Hulk, Masquerina, the Pit Knight, the Barricade Borg Blocker you're playing because it's a Link 2 that can go into your Sprite Elf of Need Be, but it's also a generic Link 2 that can pitch Agito or Kelbeck from your hand to the graveyard in order to get the mill 5 if you happen to break or something and get your extender into Sprite Elf that way. Then you have the one Striker Dragon for the Baby Dragons, the one Baron, the one Chaos Ruler, Shooting Riser, Chaos Beast, and two Entis, Fight Elf, and Diviner play. You could also play Arclight and maybe a Saravis, or if you want to side deck the Saravis, and then put the Arclight in there, that's an option. I just did not have enough testing with that in this build, especially since it's only been a day and I haven't even been able to get any opponents for this, which is why I'm just doing one replay to show some familiar engines with the addition of Mind Tuner and kind of what you can do with this new stuff. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video, I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them down below. It's Bones, signing out.